I mean, this is actually probably a historical moment because we have a large amount of angry comments and we actually agree with them. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, we are today here at the Military History Museum of the Bundeswehr in Dresden and we have Markus Pahl as guest, who is the curator of the Falschimiga exhibition. And as you might know, um, Falschimiga fought at Monte Cassino. Now, the title of the video is the most hated U.S. channel of the Second World War. And I think it might be connected here because I have actually some data in this case, although my own data, because one or two years ago I did a video with the question, was Stillwell maybe the, mo the worst U.S. channel in the Second World War? And I looked at the comments and did a and looked at the various names and then I did a, a quantitative analysis and Stillwell, in that video about Stillwell, was mentioned 199 times. And what is more interesting is that General Clark was mentioned 189 times, so one time less. In comparison, Friendle Law was mentioned 68 times and written as Friendle Hall nine times. He was the general at the Kazarine Pass. And I also looked at the top six comments when using Google Chrome in incognito mode. And well, five of them mentioned Clark <laughs> and one is about um, our conduct in the video. So I, I, I will read the first comment to you and then you, you can expand on this. I vote Clark um, disobeyed orders to cut off the German retreat in order to capture an undefended Rome for personal glory. How funded is this by current research? Is this just some angry comment or is this actually some valid statement? Uh, I think that's quite a precise comment uh, because um, Clark um, was highly um, discussed um, um, also even short, uh, shortly after the war or even uh, during the war because um, I think uh, because of two events. The first event um, uh, took place in January, end of January 44, um, with the attack of the 36th Infantry Division, U.S. Infantry Division, the Texas Division was mainly recruited from uh, soldiers from, from Texas. And um, that was um, carried out um, by, by orders uh, from General Clark. Um, Clark wanted to break through directly through the Gustav Line. And the Gustav Line is seen here in, in the background with Monte Cassino as its key position, the guardian to the Liri Valley. And the Liri Valley leads directly towards Rome, um, more than 100 kilometers, but you can go directly through the Liri Valley uh, to Rome. And that's uh, why uh, the Monte Cassino Hill was so important for, for the Germans as well for the Allied troops, of course, because it was a guardian. The Monte Cassino is uh, about 500 and something uh, high. And uh, on the top, there is the monastery, the old uh, Benedictine monastery. And of course, with artillery observers, you were able to, to watch uh, the Rapido Valley um, and also the, the Libri Valley. And uh, during the first battle of Casino, um, Clark um, had uh, one idea. Um, um, they wanted um, to outflank the Gustav Line by an ambitious landing at Anzio Natuno, uh, closer to Rome. And the hope of Clark was to a certain uh, um, extent that the German forces at the Gustav Line, with the key position around Monte Cassino, would retreat because uh, of their threat uh, in their back, yeah. uh, because of the, the risk uh, of, of uh, getting cut off uh, and, and encircled or whatsoever. And so he, he connected us, the, the landing at Anzio Natuno with the attempt to break through the Gustav Line in the uh, Rapido Valley um, into, to uh, come into the Liri Valley. 
and um, to, uh, to go directly uh, towards Rome. And um, at his disposal um, was the second uh, US Corps with two divisions. Very worn out divisions at this time, the 34th Division, the so-called Red Bull Division, and the 36th Division, the Texas, the so-called Texas Division. And those two divisions uh, had recently, before the battle uh, in January, very hard fightings um, to break through the Bernhard Line, which was um, um, uh, around the Mignano Gap uh, in front of the Gustav Line, you can say so. So there were several lines, several lines the Winter Line, um, as they call it, the, the Winter Line, but they had to break through the, the um, uh, Bernhard Line first. And uh, there were uh, in some, yeah, there were spent forces, you can say, because they had uh, received a lot of casualties during the fighting uh, before they uh, reached uh, the casino area, and so um, they um, they tried it, um, yeah, you can say, out more or less out of the movement. Ah, okay, take out of during yeah. during, during uh, the advance, advance during the advance uh, without um, without uh, being refit. Um, without heavy artillery support, I guess, and, and, and so on and so on, b b uh, without um, um, carefully take out of the move. Yeah, I think that's yes, it. yes, exactly. Um, and and so they were not able to make uh, an ordinary uh, build up of forces, and so they tried um, to to get across the Rapido River, and Rapido that means fast, speedy, uh, rapid, Rapido, the Italian word because uh, the, the, it, um, it was very fast um, uh, running, river. running river. And uh, so uh, it was, uh, of course, for them uh, uh, very clear that they um, have to have use um, engineering material, like rubber boats, like um, Bailey bridges, and so on and so on. And the big problem for the 36th Division was that the valley, the terrain, uh, there was a lot of mud. Um, it was, was not dry, it was not dried out. It was winter time. Um, in the mountains, there were uh, tons of uh, uh, melting the, snow. The, and no, else. snow at the tops and melting snow and mud in, in the valleys. And so they were not able to, to bring forward those um, precious uh, equipment from the engineers, um, even towards the, the, the Rapido. And they tried it, nevertheless, they tried it. They tried to uh, cross the Rapido uh, during night. And the Germans, uh, of course, were able to, uh, to watch it from the higher positions and to use uh, accurate artillery fire, um, to, uh, yes, even for, for the um, routes to um, um, for the Anmarschwege. For the ah, for the for the assembly lines, assembly lines and assembly areas and everything could yes. be taken under fire. Yeah. They were able to to watch into the hinterland, you can say so. And of course, the Allied always used uh, smoke um, to cover their own movements. It's of course basic, but it was impossible for them to do do this in a proper way. And so the American infantry tried to cross the Rapido. And they were able to uh, build some smaller um, bridgeheads. Yeah, br br bridgeheads, but not really bridgeheads, only t a tiny groups of, of por small portions of soldiers um, defending themselves so, so in, in surviving, uh, trying to survive uh, on the other bank of the uh, Rapido. And on the opposite, um, the German forces, uh, which were defending the Rapido, Rapido sector, um, the entrance to the Liri Valley um, um, in, in the valley were the Panzer Grenadiers, the 15th Panzer Grenadier Division. And that was a very strong division in the Italian uh, theater of war. And we have some uh, assessments from the military intelligence uh, of the Allied forces in Italy, and they described the 15th Panzer Grenadier Division as the strongest German division in, in Italy. At this um, point, yeah. at this point uh, end of January, not the Pepper troops or the 26th Panzer Division or whatsoever, they said, no, uh, the 15th Panzer Grenadier Division is the best division. 
um, according to the book um, of, of Atkinson, uh, he described it. And uh, the 15th Panzer Grenadier Division uh, had a lot of time uh, to build uh, even concrete bunkers, um, every kind of minefields. Uh, they even uh, ducked in the Panzer IV, um, which were not able to, to drive uh, anymore. And so they were very well prepared here in the, uh, at the entrance to the Libri Valley uh, and um, could quite easily uh, defend their positions and repulse uh, the American attacks. And I think this led to a congressional inquiry after the war? Yes, exactly, because the veterans uh, later, shortly after the war, accused uh, Mark Clark um, as uh, the commanding officer of the 5th uh, U.S. Army uh, because he gave the orders to attack uh, with insufficient forces, they said, and the casualty rate was quite, uh, was, was really, not quite, was really high, uh, up to 2,000 casualties during those uh, two days, two nights uh, fighting um, uh, to cross the Rapido. And the Germans um, um, repulse us uh, on a, in a quite easy way. And in their uh, perception, uh, it was some kind of reconnaissance attack. Um, and they could solve it with their own reserves from the division. They were not uh, even, um, they did not uh, have to ask the higher commands, the corps, or whatsoever, because they were able to to solve it in, in with, 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 their, with their own reserves. So, and that was, of course, um, a debacle for, for the Americans um, in uh, January 44. And that was uh, one of the reasons, I think, uh, why Mark Clark uh, is one of the most maybe hated, even hated US generals even now. So, this was mainly the reason why he was waited in Texas. The question is, what was the second reason? Yes, and it's, that related to, to the first uh, comment, comment uh, you read out. Um, the second, uh, that was uh, during the, the last battle, the German, for the Germans, the third and last battle for the Allied, uh, the Allied perspective, the fourth battle, the last battle in May, because um, the Allies finally um, were able to break through the Gustav line a little bit more in the south uh, with, uh, French, uh, with the French Expeditionary Corps uh, in the mountains, in the Arunchi Mountains, and they break through a German infantry division. And uh, so the front uh, was, was breaks, bro broken through uh, and was uh, uh, in the move, you can say so. And um, the 36th Division took not part in the breakthrough because they were uh, at this point uh, in May 44 at Anzio Nettuno in the beachhead. And um, there was an operation to link up between the advancing uh, troops in the Libri Valley and the, the um, beachhead forces of the, of the 6th U.S. Corps in Anzio Nettuno. And uh, it was called Operation Buffalo, and uh, they both connected uh, in, in end of May. And um, Clark um, had uh, had the order to to cut off the retreating German 10th Army, or at least the 14th Panzer Corps, the, the bulk of the 14th Panzer Corps. Those. Um, uh, forces, German so forces, east. Uh, uh, those German forces which this war uh, in the Libby Valley, and uh, he sh uh, his his task was uh, to cut them off, going from Anzio into the um, uh, into uh, towards the Apennines, towards the mountain terrain, and not directly to Rome. And um, the advantage was. Uh, in getting uh, to the to the German hinterland, that he would have been able to cut off the bulk of the tenth army, the strong tenth army, and of course that would have been better for for the perspectives uh, in, in, for the war in Italy. But um, Clark decided, okay, no, I will, I want to do uh, do not want uh, to do this and carry out my order. 
I go directly uh, towards Rome. And, um, you know, his staff officers uh, made some jokes about him. Uh, his name was Mark Clark, as we know, but they called him Marcus Clarkus um, in a, um, in a, in a j joking um, with, with, the, with Roman emperors. So, And um, so, um, um, actually, Clark was able to get Rome and to, to capture Rome. Um, his first troops, advancing troops, um, reached uh, Rome on 4th June 44, uh, and um, it was soon uh, after the taking of Rome, it was overshadowed, of course, by the D-Day, because uh, that took place on 6th June 44, and so the publicity that <laughs> Mark Clark hoped for um, d d was not there as uh, in, in the sense he expected it before. So it was overshadowed by the D-Day. And, and the Germans so, could retreat in order. The, exactly, the Germans could retreat in an orderly manner uh, towards um, Middle Italy and North, North Italy and to the Green Line. Was he court-martialed for this? No. And uh, today it's disputed, okay, how exact were his, uh, his orders actually? Um, was it a disobe towards uh, the commander of the 15th Army Group, the British uh, General Field Marshal Alexander? Uh, did he give um, Clark the direct order to cut off the, um, the 10th Army's routes, or was it also possible for him to interpret the order in a more open way <laughs> and to go directly to Rome? because? Um, the Rome option had also a few advantages because they capture the, the city and so on. It was a prestige success and so on and so on. And so uh, there were some uh, protectors of Clark who, who said, okay, it was not uh, in, in a direct uh, d disobedience. It was something um, in between. And, and there were no consequences, no negative consequences for Clark in this case. Okay. And so, um, I mean, the British um, uh, discussed um, especially the order given by, by Alexander. And, and uh, yeah, what, what does it mean to go on Rome or to Rome? There are differences. And you see, that's, that's really, they're going very deep into detail about the order which was given by Alexander towards uh, Clark. And so, but actually, um, he was uh, he captured Rome, and, and, and this was his so, goal to a certain degree. And the, the, yes. the military more and viable option would have been to cut off the German retreat. Maybe. And uh, moreover, um, um, the 36th division was one of the divisions which was able to capture Rome, and so they received uh, some yeah prestige. Um, from the capture of Rome, and that balanced a little bit um, maybe the first attack in January and their, um, their defeat or so in January, and in May '44 they received um, yeah, uh, kudo. So, you know? if, 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 if they were able to cut off the German army and save many lives, I guess it was not worth it. But that's uh, of course, I, I, I think so too. Uh, I tend uh, absolutely to, to this opinion too. Of course, it would have been better for the Allied uh, side. But uh, I only, only tried to explain that, that there are different views. But I think also it would have been better to cut off the 10th Army and, and uh, encircle them, make a pocket and defeat uh, the bulk of the Italian Army. So, I mean... This is actually probably a historical moment because we have a large amount of angry comments and we actually agree with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So, um, anything else to add? No, I think we... Uh, Perfect. So then, thank you very much. And we have, angry com we have a comment section, so if you have any angry comments, that's the time now. <laughs> uh, thank you to the Military History Museum of the Bundeswehr in Dresden. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye.